Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, last episode, we actually were having some steering issues in our car and we found that the brake caliper was stuck. So we took it apart, we broke it, but in today's episode, we are actually gonna be rebuilding that caliper back and so stick around to see how we did it. Okay, so we finally got our parts for the caliper. So let's go ahead and open this guy and see what we got here. So you might be asking yourself, how would you go over the trouble in our storing a caliper? And my answer to you are two words, price and quality. I looked into buying a whole caliper uh, assembly and I found that the aftermarket replacements were about $180 and a OEM replacement was about $400. Obviously, buying a OEM was out of the question. I wasn't going to spend $400 on the caliper. And then, yes, I could have gone with the aftermarket one, but the quality difference between the original and the aftermarket is so big that that's what I chose cheapest and best option, which is to replace it myself. I only spend in these parts I'm gonna show you right now, under $60. I think I spent close to $30 in all the parts I'm gonna to need to restore. So I'm gonna have OEM quality caliper with all new parts for really cheap. So there's no way of beating that. So let's go put it in. Since we have the caliper out of the car, let's use this opportunity to protect it and make it look really good. Let's start by cleaning it. I used this wire brush to take as much crap as I could. Here, the rust in the cylinder walls was what made it made the piston get stuck. So we need to somehow clean that, that way our new piston won't get stuck also. So in order to clean the inside of the race where the rust it got rusted, I'm going to be using these extra fine sponges. And the reason why I'm going to be using, instead of just using a piece of uh, sandpaper, is because as you can see, the the sponge it's able to flex around the shape of the cylinder that way we won't get any sharp edges we will be able to be as smooth as we can as we are um, as we are as we are cleaning it one thing that i did i actually cut one of these sponges to be able to get better into the into the groove and uh, be better at cleaning it now that everything is free of rust let's go ahead and prep it so we can paint it Before we apply the paint, we want to cover these areas. The caliper bracket sliders, the piston housing, the brake fluid inlet, and lastly, we want to protect the threads. Something that I like to do is just screw the bolt back like so. If you have any fluids that come out, make sure that you clean those before you paint. For the paint, I will be using this paint for calipers. Uh, I chose the color black, so let's get painting.
since I already had one of the calipers out and I painted that one, I went ahead and I took the other three and I painted those two. Now that we finished painting, we are ready to start rebuilding the caliper. We'll start by installing the rubber seal that goes in this groove right here, as you can see. So go ahead and just simply put it in the groove. On one side in, then the other side just slides on. There we go. Make sure it sits well, goes all the way in. Next we're gonna have to do the dust boot and a lot of people think that it's impossible to sit the, the dust boot but I'm gonna show you how to, you can do it easily and make it possible. First of all you're gonna wanna put it into the piston like so. Slide it over and make sure it sits in the groove of the piston. And then once it's seated, just fold it up like this. This is gonna make it easier to seat it after. Once you have folded it, you are ready to put it into the caliper. Make sure that Make sure that you start it as straight as you can. You can start it by, by hand. Once the piston is seated, now we can use a little piece of wood to make sure that we press on it evenly. And then you can use a C clamp like this one. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna use a B one, and one and after allows you to press the whole thing, the whole assembly. So just use this, the wood and, and, and the C clamp to get it started. And make the, the key part here is to make sure that the piston is square with the race. You wanna make sure that it's is straight as you can see right now this is not straight so i'm adjusting the piece of wood to make sure that to press in the right side of the piston to make it evenly once you got it squared up you can remove the wood and just push on the bottom of the piston like this and just go to town to, with it make sure you go slowly watch everything and just drive the piston all the way down make sure that the piston presses all the way down and once it's all the way down then we're done pushing the piston now with the piston seated we are ready to flip the rubber boot, uh, the dust boot tab again. So just flip it over in this manner. Make sure you go all the way around the front and the back. The back, it's a little stubborn sometimes. So you just have to play with it. But the key is that this, the lip needs, the, of the boot needs to go inside that this group right here. That's why it makes it really tough. So it needs to be seat in that groove all the way around like so kind of like that you know when you push it it goes in there but you should start uh, by seating the boot on the back i'm gonna call the back this area right here i'm pointing with my finger but so you know what um, what you had to do i'm gonna show you in the front and then apply what i show you in the front to the rear so using some kind of screwdriver just use it to push the boot down into the groove just like this just push it push it down like 
Excellent. Make sure to press in the lip itself to avoid putting a hole into the dust boot, like we said before. Just need to have patience and work it slowly. Once you are able to get it down, just keep your keep working yourself around. Now that you know the technique, you can use this and start in the rear. If you start in the front, this is what it will happen once you get to the back. You won't have any space to put a screwdriver of any kind. The boot itself will be pushed against the caliper, so it will make it virtually impossible to sit the remaining of the boot. So make yourself a favor and just start in the rear. So I already seated the rear and now I have a lot of wiggle room to seat the rest of the boot. So once you get to this point, then you're gonna wanna stretch the boot this way to make sure you can see it well. And there you go, that's how you install this dang rubber dust boot. Alright, let's continue with the rebuild. Now let's get ready to install the slider rubber grommet. Before you install them, just put a little bit of grease to let them go in a little easier. With everything looking good, we are ready for the next step. Installing the bleeder screw.
back to my garage. Okay, so we already turned the wheel all the way to the left when we're doing the right side. And you're ready to start putting the caliper on. So here is where the caliper is going to mount. But before we even mount the, the caliper or we do anything, what we're going to be doing is applying some uh, anti-seize. That way, that way when we install our bolt, this surface right here won't get welded or, or stuck into this, the inner surface of the bolt. Okay, so the first step that we're going to have to do is to install our brake line. So. After you're done screwing the brake line, don't, don't tie it yet. Wait until we we put it in the on the disc, and then we'll be tightening it. So now we're ready to slide it over the brake and put our bolt on. Before we insert our before we insert our bolt, we're gonna put a dab of lock set. And just like that, our caliper is back in the wheel. So snag the bolt. Just don't get them super tight yet. <clears throat> and then we'll torque these bolts to 22 foot pounds or 30 newton meters there you go perfect now that we torqued the caliper down we can go ahead and tighten just hand tighten the brake line there we go if you're doing this job in the same car as I am the E thirty six M three, then you're gonna have to install this guy, which is which is a sensor that uh, allows you to know when the when your brake pads are worn. I mean, it seems pretty symmetrical, but it actually has a difference. And if you can see in this side, it actually has a little bump. That bump, so this little guy, goes away from from the piston. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So that bumpy side goes in this little pocket right here. There you go. So now that we got our caliper installed, we are ready to start bleeding the system. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, it really helps out. And stick around for the next video where we're actually going to be applying some flex fluid to the whole system. We're going to be bleeding the system. Since you just rebuilt your caliper, you're going to have to take this step. Since it's a pretty extensive procedure, I'm going to make that a separate video about that. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.